Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, you better get behind. Cause victory today is mine. Oh, well, I'm joy. victory is mine today and I have the joy of the Lord in my heart and I hope you do too it's a joy to be with you for these next few moments as we have a few minutes to share I'm Pastor George Walters Faith Outreach Center 7607 Sheldon Road in Tampa Florida <clears throat> and if you're looking for a place to come visit or to come feel the joy of the Lord uh, come and see us here at Faith Outreach Center uh, we're here on the outskirts of Tampa about 10 minutes 15 minutes from the airport and uh We'd just love to have you come. Those of you who've been tuning in on a regular basis, thank you uh, for being part of this little uh, th this little ten minute program. I hope that the word of God is making a difference. I always like to sing a song because I'm a praiser. I'm actually a psalmist. I, I I love to sing the word of God, and I love to lift up Jesus with my worship and praise. I think when we come into His, his presence, uh, that He'll always uh, open up your your heart with praise with worship ministering to the Lord, and then when it comes time for the Word of God, it'll penetrate your heart. I want to talk to you for a few moments <clears throat> out of 1 Peter and chapter 1. Uh, Peter in the Scripture was an incredible guy. He's one of my favorite uh, Bible characters besides David. David's my favorite Old Testament character, and uh, Peter is my uh, New Testament uh, one that I think that he's so incredible because he made a lot of mistakes just like the rest of us. Uh, he did things wrong, opened up his mouth, and inserted foot many times. Uh, but he was the kind of guy uh, that uh, uh, loved the Lord with all of his heart. And you might say, well, Pastor, don't you remember he denied Jesus? Oh, I know that. Uh, but he also was the one that Jesus uh, pulled aside after the resurrection in uh, John 21 and said, Peter, I'm going to commission you to be a pastor. And he said, uh, ask him three times, will you feed my sheep? The first time he said, Peter, will you feed my sheep? The second time he said, will you uh, feed my little lambs? Third time he said, will you find pasture land to, for my sheep to graze in? And, and that's the call of a pastor, a shepherd. And uh, Peter was an incredible pastor. Uh, later on in, in life, when he got mature and, and, and secured himself in the things of God, he wrote First and Second Peter. And he wrote through the aspect or through the eyes of a pastor and not just a prophet not just a uh, an apostle uh, but as a pastor would speak with the love of his heart into the sheep uh, to keep them on track and in first peter chapter 1 and verse 13 i'm teaching uh, on thursday nights out of first peter and last night i taught on this but uh, there's some incredible principles in this one verse uh, out of first peter chapter 1 and verse 13 and here's what it says. Therefore, uh, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins. Uh, what does that mean? First of all, where's the loins? The loins is the reproductive part of a person's body, a man's body, a woman's body. That's where the reproductive part of our body produces new life and produces uh, security and, and opens up for new dimensions in our life. And P Peter is using that as a... Uh, uh, as, as an expression uh, for us to also gird up our minds just like we would the loins of our body to protect us from damage, from wounds, from hurts. Gird up your mind. Keep your, your mind pure. Uh, gird it up. In other words, put a protection around how you think. Uh, don't let 
uh, ungodly thoughts come into your mind. Don't let the devil play havoc with your thinking. And then you get confused about whether you really understand who God is. Gird up the loins of your mind, the scripture says. Put a protection around your thinking. And uh, in fact, it, 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 Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 1 and 2, he said, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, to make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our only, which is our reasonable service. In other words, only reasonable that we walk right. It's only reasonable uh, that we're a living sacrifice to God. Back in the Old Testament, uh, the priest would take animals and kill them at the at the altar of uh, sacrifice, and uh, they would sacrifice uh, the people or sacrifice the animals for a. Uh, uh, for a, a token to God to move up their sins. But the scripture says, uh, Paul said in Romans, we don't have to uh, shed blood. We don't have to die for the cause of Christ. Jesus died for us. He paid the ultimate price. And now our job is to be a living sacrifice. Uh, live right. Uh, act right. Talk right. And be the kind of person that's a witness for God. And then, uh, uh, then he said, by the renewing of our minds by the renewing. Our mind needs to be renewed. Uh, what does renewing mean? Renewing definitely means take the old out and put in the new. Take the old things out that would cause you not to uh, think right. Uh, get rid of some of those things that we brought in from our childhood and from our, our life before Christ. And get them out of there and fill your mind with the goodness and the mercies of God. And not only that, he says, therefore gird up the loins of your mind, but he also said, be sober. Be sober. Uh, you know, we have a lot of problems with, with substance abuse this day, these days. Alcoholism and drug abuse. And uh, well, what's so bad about that? It changes the way you think. It changes your mindset. Um, and whenever you know a person that's, that gets under the influence of alcohol, they don't think right when they're not under that influence. And so uh, Peter is saying, be sober in your thinking. Be sober in your walk for God. Uh, Keep a clear mind on how you think, and uh, it'll, it'll give victory. Then he said, and rest, and rest, and rest in the hope of God. Rest in the hope of God. You know, we need a rest in the things of God. If you want to read a little bit about resting, uh, you can look at Hebrews chapter 4, and it talks about, uh, God talks about how the Israelites, back in the days of the Old Testament, they had the opportunity to rest and trust God, but they didn't do it, and it cost them their life. They didn't really know how to make contact because they didn't know how to put their, their, their rest and just sit back and say, God, I trust you today. In fact, the scripture tells us in Proverbs, it says, trust the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not in your own understanding, and he will direct your path. He will establish your ways. And so we need to learn how to rest in the hope of God. What is the hope? What does hope have to do with anything? Well, the scripture says in Hebrews, it said, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, faith and hope are twin brothers. They work together. Uh, your hope is something out beyond your reach. Your faith reaches out and grabs hope and pulls it into reality where it becomes real in your life. And so rest in your hope. Uh, and then it says, uh, fully upon the grace of God. That's another word, the grace of God, G-R-A-C-E. Uh, really, you've heard probably many times uh, grace being said, uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. We are what we are because Jesus is who he is. Uh, it isn't who we are, but it's whose we are. Uh, we belong to him, and his grace is sufficient for us. And then the last thing it says, that it be bought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, we need to study this word so we get revelation, so we can have insight, so we can have uh, uh, understanding, if you will, of what the word of God is and who he is. Uh, because when you understand who God is, you understand how much he loves you. And you understand that he's made all provision for us to have victory, not only in this life, but in the one to come, eternal life. Well, it's been a joy to be with you. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray for those that are listening right now. I ask God that your joy might be big in their heart. They'll gird up the loins of their mind. They'll recognize the grace that we have in you. They'll put their hope in you, and they'll rest in the things of God. 
Bless them, Lord, today. Let this be a glorious day that they can put their strength in the Lord Jesus Christ and they can walk victorious in you. Bless them. God bless you. See you next week.